Hey guys, Matt here today. Welcome back to another video. So today we're going to be covering the popular coding question known as subsets on leak code. So today I'm going to show you guys a cool trick involving subsets and bit manipulation that you can use for these types of problems. So first, the problem states that given a set of distinct integers represented as a list, return all possible subsets. And here's an example. When you're given the set 1, 2, 3, you have to return all possible combinations of the numbers 1, 2, and 3. So for this problem, these are all the subsets of size 1, these are all the subsets of size 2, this is the only subset of size 3, and this is the empty set. So our answer would be to return a list containing all 8 of these subsets. And remember, even though our sets are represented as lists, the order of the numbers doesn't matter. So, how do we solve this problem using bits? Well, it turns out that every single subset corresponds to a unique bit string, or binary number, and vice versa. For instance, in this example, the subsets in our answer can be represented by the following bit strings. Basically, for every element in the original set, I put a 1 if our subset includes it, and I put a 0 if our subset does not include it. Following this logic, we can come up with all the subsets for a given set by simply iterating over the bit strings. For instance, the number 100 gives us this subset containing only the first number in our original set. The number 010 gives us this subset containing only the second element in our original set. And the number 111 gives us this subset containing all the elements of our original set. Now, how do we use this to solve our problem? Well, note that the list of bit strings includes all sequences from 000 to 111, which, in decimal, is the same as all the numbers between 0 and 7. So, to find all the subsets of 1, 2, 3, all we have to do is iterate from 0 to 7 and include elements wherever there is a 1 in the binary representation. All right, now let's look at the general case algorithm for solving this problem. So first, I'd like to point out that for a set of size n, we have a total of 2 to the n different subsets that we have to include in our answer. The reason is that for every element in our set, we can either choose to include it in our subset or not include it in our subset. Therefore, for every element, we have two choices, giving us a total of eight different subsets or two to the n different subsets that we must include in our answer. All right, now let's walk through this algorithm. So in the outer loop, we're going to iterate from i equals 0 up to, but not including, 2 to the n. And then we're going to convert that value of i into binary. We're going to look at its bits. And then wherever there's a 1, we're going to take that number in our original set and add it to the current subset that we're creating. And then we're here, we're going to add our current subset to our total solution set. And then we're going to go back up to the top and keep repeating for every single value of i. So every single time i goes up, we're going to create a new subset and add it to our solution set. And then we're finished when i reaches 2 to the n, meaning we've created 2 to the n total subsets. All right, now let's walk through a small example with the elements 4, 6, and 7, where we have to find all the possible subsets. So we start with i equals 0, and then we convert it to binary, which gives us 0, 0, 0. And then this tells us that we want to include none of the elements in our subset. So that gives us the empty set. Now we go on to i equals 1 which is represented as 0, 0, 1 in binary. And that tells us we only want to include the last number in our subset. And the reason is because we have a 1 in the last spot of our binary representation. So that corresponds to the subset consisting of only 7. Now for i equals 2, that's represented as 0, 1, 0. And that tells us we only want to include the second element in our subset. Now for i equals 3, that's represented as 0, 1, 1. And that tells us we want to include the second and third element in our subset. 
Uh, hopefully you can see where this is going. And then finally, we're going to go up to i equals 7. And remember, since we started at 0, we have a total of 2 to the n subsets, even though we're only going up to i equals 2 to the n minus 1. So 7 is represented as 1, 1, 1. And that tells us we want to include all three elements in our subset. And again, at each step of i, we're going to create this subset, and then we're going to add it to our solution set. And in the end, we're going to return all of these subsets, and that is the answer. All right, so for the final part of this video, we're going to be turning our pseudocode into actual code on the Leak Code website. So I'm going to be using C++, but the code will be nearly identical in Java, and it'll look very similar in any other language. Also, I'd like to point out that they're giving us the set in the form of a vector. However, when we're doing the problem, we still need to obey the properties of a set. That is, uh, we can't have duplicate elements, and the order doesn't matter. All right, so let's begin. So first, let's create the variable where we're going to store all of our subsets. Now let's set n equal to the size of the set, and let's figure out how many subsets we need which, if you recall from earlier, is 2 to the nth power. And now we're going to use the variable i to iterate over all the subsets we need to make. And now this is where we convert i to binary, and then look at the binary representation to create our subset. So, uh, in practice, we don't actually do any converting to binary. What we do instead is we use another variable in order to iterate over every single bit of i and check its value. So how we do this is we're going to use j to iterate over the bits of i, and we use something called a bit mask. So now what we need to do is a bit shift. So what we're going to do is we're going to bit shift i over by j, and then and it with the value 1. So what this does is, by first of all, by anding bitwise, this is called a bitwise operator, this tells us whatever digit is in the 1's place. For example, 1, the value 1, is going to be a bunch of zeros and then a 1. And then say we had a number such as this. So by doing the AND operation between these two numbers, it will equal 1 if the last digit is a 1. However, if we do a bitwise AND with, uh, say, this, then this is going to result in 0 because the last value is a 0. So basically what we're doing, doing here is we're iterating over j, and we're taking turns, shifting every single bit to the 1's position. Then we can AND it with 1, and check whether that bit had a value of 1 or 0. So if that was a bit hard to follow, I apologize, but I highly suggest watching another video on it, and it's really not that complex. So, anyways, we're going to do this, and then if this is true, it means that the digit corresponding to a bit shift of j was in fact a value of 1. And then what we can do is we can add nums j in order into uh, the current subset we're creating. All right, so we're going to repeat that for every single bit by using this value j. We're going to iterate over i and bit shift by j, check its value with this expression, and if that bit was a 1, we're going to add the corresponding element to our subset. And now, once we're done with every single bit of i, we can add this subset to our answer. All right, and now we should be done. And what we're going to do is we're going to return our answer, which is a list of all the um, subsets. And let's submit. All right, so um, passed faster than 97%. Again, I really wouldn't focus on the percentile leak code gives you. Uh, it varies a lot depending on a bunch of factors. Rather, I'd focus on the big O time complexity of your code. So in this, for this problem, our solution is going to be big O of n times 2 to the nth power. The reason is because in this outer loop, we iterate from 0 uh, up to the number of subsets, which is equal to exactly 2 to the power of n. And then in the inner loop, we have n operations where we check every single bit of our number i. So in total, O of n times 2 to the n. Um, so yeah, that's about it for this video. If you enjoyed, I hope you give me a like, comment, subscribe. 
and I'll see you guys next time. Have a good one.